If you guys remember back in 2017 where I began the concept of Cartoon Crisis, Sending the Clones from Jimmy Neutron was the first episode that I reviewed involving Cartoon Crisis, and six years later, that video has aged poorly to the point that my opinions towards it have changed. Granted, not completely, but to be perfectly real with you, still thinking about still thinking about this episode along with its sequel, The Trouble with Clones. This show really has a lot going for when it comes to making memes, making jokes about having cool Jimmy and stating that Evil Jimmy is the best villain than Professor Calamitous, but to tell you the truth, it doesn't change the fact that this episode alone just still didn't work out for me. My original review of this episode was really poorly made. And no, it's not because I have an iPad facing my laptop in order to record just an image of the episode at a time. It's mainly the fact that I took this episode way too seriously. I was too negative, and the reason onto why I made that review in the first place is because I saw a blogger on DeviantArt about his perspective on the episode, and to tell you the truth, I took his influence a lot too much to the point that it only took me years to have my own influence done much more better when it comes to a better perspective. So for the sake of this revisit, I'm gonna be revisiting and sending the clones obviously, but I'm also gonna be talking about the trouble with clones and the season 4 premiere that ended up being scrapped due to the bank drop of DNA Productions, Deep Impacts, because there was a lot to discuss and the fact that I just didn't have any plans on talking about the trouble with clones in a separate review. To be perfectly honest, out of all the episodes that I have watched the most from Jimmy Neutron when it comes to rewatch, this is the episode that I skipped the most along with the Judy episode that came out before this one because even if this episode doesn't frustrate me like it used to, but at the same time the problems are still there and the fact that this episode is trying way too hard to be memeing before memes become a thing in the future. Believe me when I say this, when I made the original review, I had no idea of the memes behind the episode and the amount of content that centers around the Jimmy clones, mainly from Cool Jimmy. If I had the knowledge on the memes themselves when I made the review of the first, I would have understand a lot more when it comes to the popularity of what people found in the Jimmy clones, especially since that the memes from Jimmy Neutron is all over the place when it comes to other aspects. But the thing is, as much as I enjoy the comedy from this show, this episode just didn't make me laugh as much as the other episodes. And it's not because of the fact of how they were poorly executed when it comes to the clones encounters of Jimmy's friends and family, mainly Jimmy's grandmother. You see, if you guys remember the short that was promoting Jimmy Neutron, they had a short of Carla messing with the cloning machine and there were multiple Carlos. And thinking about this information, knowing full well that there was a lot going on involving the promotion of the Jimmy Neutron film, they pretty much didn't have an idea on doing a cloning episode. Like, they probably did, but when it comes to a cloning episode that is just mainly the same Jimmy with the same personality, they probably want to do a change. Mainly giving the clones their distinct personalities. And to tell you the truth, I don't hate the, these clones like I used to in my overview, and I'm not gonna lie, when I first watched this episode during my childhood, I actually enjoyed these clones because it really felt unique on having distinct personalities as the clones rather than the same clone over and over again, to the point that Teen Titans Go is pretty much the only show along with Jimmy Neutron that has this ideal of having clones having distinct personalities. It's just if you don't remove the context from anything from this episode, mainly while well, the memes come into play and the distinct personalities, it's difficult to ignore the problems of how the distinct personalities are the causes of Jimmy just messing everything up, which for me personally just still isn't the case. 
Here's the thing, I understand that Jimmy Neutron was in a watchful mood in order to get to outer space to get the ice crystals, and I understand that him not taking the time to look at the problems of the clones is problematic, and it's mostly his problem that he caused. But the thing is, he stated that the space crystals or the ice crystals from outer space only comes for every 2,000 years, and his dedication towards outer space and science is honestly his high priority. Which is why I don't take his character seriously as much as other people do, and even if the relatability is a lot more different when it comes to other characters that are more relatable than him, I can't say for a fact that if he completed his chores without the clones, he would, he would probably still be able to get the Ice Crystals, because I doubt he would. Yes, I can't deny that Jimmy isn't egotistical, because he is. But the thing is, considering that the Ice Crystals were a lot more limited, and, she, he, and he really needs those Ice Crystals, he literally needs to make things right for himself, and to tell you the truth, the clones themselves were a bad idea from the start, and it does have that trope of clones messing things up. It honestly feels like it's forced, which I'm gonna get to real soon. Here's the thing, I think that one of the reasons onto why the citizens are gaining up on Jimmy isn't because of the trope of the clones messing things up, it's mainly the fact that this episode is taking inspiration from the Spongebob episode, Sleepy Time. Or in this case, instead of the dreams, it's mainly the clones messing everyone up. Yes, I know it's far-fetched, but the thing is, it really feels awkward to think that Carl and Sheen are getting up on their best friend, which is somewhat similar to how Sandy gains up on Spongebob in the episode, and even though their motivations make more sense in the Spongebob episode, even if it's mostly overweighted, which for me personally, it is, in here, it really feels like it's mainly the writing that is just making Carl and Sheen act differently for the sake of having some, for, some sort of conflict towards the end. And believe me, I'm gonna get into conflict much more later on in this video. Last time, I only talked about some of the victims centering around Jimmy's clones, so let's go through them one by one, from Granny to the Citizen. Granny's reason of being up her grandson, which is still difficult to believe, is because Happy Jimmy causes her to smile, which results her teeth to fall out. To tell you the truth, me stating on the fact that she couldn't put her teeth back in after it landed on the ground is disgusting that it's full of germs, which I have to admit I would take that back, but at the same time, considering that this is the same character who was actually happy throughout the majority of Granny Baby and even having no problem with Jimmy whatsoever after she turned back to normal, I'm sorry, but I'm still not believing that, especially since that if it's mainly because of mood swings, then no, I'm not believing that either. Yes, I am aware that she wasn't in a good mood when it comes to her sitting on the bench in the park, and elderlies used to act that way, but to tell you the truth, in comparison to Granny Baby where she didn't have a problem of turning into a baby while turning back to normal, if you're mean to tell me that the argument is that she was too happy that causes her to get revenge on Jimmy along with the others, it's still difficult for me to believe. Like, the teeth being on the ground was a criticism that I took a little too far, but to tell you the truth, it doesn't make Granny any better for her reasonings of gaining up on Jimmy. Next is Carla, who said Jimmy stated that what's the point of doing homework when we all go away since there were dust in the wind. To tell you the truth, I did state it in my original review that it was considered mean from Sad Jimmy to say, even if he was sympathetic. It doesn't change the fact that Carl's motivations of being up his best friend over that is still difficult for me to believe, because since that Carl knows Jimmy a lot more than the other characters, wouldn't he have an understanding on what Jimmy looks like, especially since that Jimmy doesn't have a sad face? on his shirt, which I'm referring to Sad Jimmy, technically frowny face. It's really odd to think that Carl would still go against Jimmy like that. Like, 
here's the thing, if Sad Jimmy was just representing or just making fun of people like Kawa when it comes to depression, it would be one thing, but at the same time, this scene is too short for me to feel sympathy towards Kawa since that it just comes and goes. To tell you the truth, the amount of times that Kawa and Sheen have been testing Jimmy's inventions for over the course of these seasons and the fact that this is literally the moment where it actually hurts Kawa physically and mentally, then no, it's not making me convinced whatsoever. Which is another reason on to why the clones messing things up just doesn't work. But let's but let's get into cool Jimmy and Nick. Nick out of everyone in the group has more justification on being up Jimmy, considering that cool Jimmy broke his skateboard. And to be perfectly honest, breaking something from someone else's possession just isn't right, even if it was an accident. Granted, I understand that when it's done in an accident, it's mainly for people being mostly forgiven, but when it comes to Nick, since that he's supposed to be a tough guy, and since that this was season 2, well, he didn't lose his reputation, his reputation completely, then I'm not really against Nick whatsoever. Granted, the cool Jimmy having a different voice may be far-fetched, but when it comes to the sunglasses and different hair do, Nick can somehow be fooled by that, knowing full well that it's not that much of a disguise and mainly not much of a difference in comparison to the other Jimmys. Because for me personally, the hairstyles from the other Jimmys aside from Sad Jimmy, is a lot more different to the point that it's difficult for me to take the characters seriously when they recognize them as the same Jimmy. But still, out of all the characters who gain up on Jimmy, Nick is easily the best one of them all. Now let's get into the second worst of the gain up on Jimmy, which is Sheen. Well, his motivations of being up his best friend is because Funny Jimmy mocked Ultra Lord's family. Now look, I understand that Gene has an obsession of Ultra which is part of his character, I get that, but considering that he doesn't understand the difference of making fun of a family rather than a comedic just making the jokes involving a family, I still found it difficult to believe considering that Sheen is supposed to be into Ultra Lord, that he, sh that he should know a lot about Ultra Lord. I know this may be a nitpick, but... Funny Jimmy, who is just born, and even if Jimmy was in the scenario, has no knowledge of Ultra Lord's family, if it was ever described of Ultra Lord's family in the show in this universe. So, that's literally one of the reasons on to why I still don't believe Sheen's reasoning of being up Jimmy, because it just feels a lot more far-fetched the more I got, the more I look into it. Yes, this nitpick is really, really insignificant, but at the same time, the more you get, get older and the more you realize these aspects of the motivations from characters and the knowledge, you question more and more to the point that there's honestly no turning back on seeing the qualities from this episode, especially when you take it out of context. Cindy's reasoning on getting up on Jimmy is the fact that Romantic Jimmy or Romance Jimmy is flowing with her. And to tell you the truth, I've been discussing about this relationship between Jimmy and Cindy for so long, so I'm just gonna say this right now. Even if she isn't fooled by the fake French accent that she questioned, I just don't understand onto how she is that shallow and blind to see that that is not the real Jimmy. Because in the Valentine's Day episode, when it comes to Jimmy's obsession towards her due to the love potion, wouldn't she get the idea that Jimmy wouldn't do any of this type of stuff like mainly saying a song or having a kiss randomly, which is so... Something that Cindy wouldn't approve, especially after watching the Dream episode. It really makes this episode really difficult to understand. And to be honest, this is the closest that is actually humorous since that I can understand where the comedy is coming from. But to tell you the truth, Romantic Jimmy is literally one of the mid-clones that really feels somewhat believable, but at the same time... It's not convincing me that this is the real Jimmy from Cindy's perspective, even if she can not be fooled by the fake 
the fake French accent. And the reason why I say not four is because... The fact that she is the only character that actually questions the voices from one of the clones is somewhat believable. But to tell you the truth, the fact that she is willing to take down Jimmy, because to tell you the truth, even if it may be justified because she's supposed to be enemies towards him, but she doesn't have a reason. I've already went through so much of this Jimmy-Cindy relationship nonsense that... At this point, I just, I'm just not really into this ship. It, it just doesn't. And to tell you the truth, it's just becoming really irritating to see these scenes, even if it's supposed to be part of the dynamic of Jimmy and Cindy. Cindy's constant moon swings from time to time is honestly difficult to get into, even if it's supposed to be part of her character and her relationship with Jimmy. And considering that Jimmy has the same method in the King of Mars episode, well, he ignores Cindy completely, even if his motivations is a lot, is slightly different than Cindy's. It's honestly difficult to see, to see two perspectives to understand the other, rather than just understanding what they really like and what they really enjoy being together. Because there was a reason on why I have no plans on getting into the episode Stranded anytime soon. As for the final person, when I say that Sheen is the second worst, he is definitely the worst. Now, I understand that he got hit in the face with a pie, I get it, but after Evil Jimmy threw the pie at him, he said, you can't beat the classics, and the guy said, well, I'll say, and they, the two look at the camera, which is supposed to be breaking the fourth wall moment. So, if you're going to make the argument that the breaking the fourth wall moment is supposed to be humorous, and his mood swing when he confronted Hugh about Jimmy throwing the pie in his face is supposed to be a serious thing, then I'm sorry, but... It just feels phoned in. Like, it really feels phoned in, considering that he's supposed to understand the joke, which he enjoyed only to get furious at the joke when Hugh tells him that. It's not believable. Like, if the break in the fourth wall moment is supposed to make the characters out of character for the sake of making the joke work, it's not convincing me, considering that whenever I see this joke in particular, it really feels something that Funny Jimmy would have done, knowing full well that. He's into pies, just as how comedics will use pies for comedic effect. So, to be perfectly real with you, nearly every single character who gained up on Jimmy, aside from Nick, has weaker justifications on taking down or beating up Jimmy, especially since that out of all the times that Jimmy made things worse. I'm gonna be totally real with you, making six clones rather than five, especially making an evil clone of himself, isn't all that terrible because in the following episode, The Trouble with Clones, Jimmy manages to capture his evil clone, which wasn't that difficult. And to tell you the truth, the aftermath of sending the clones and before this episode, Evil Jimmy didn't do anything aside from making pranks which only made the ending of sending the clones less meaningful, considering that the motivation here is that Jimmy's friends and others are so mad to the point that they're going to deal with so much havoc involving evil Jimmy, only to realize that nothing bad has happened after this episode, when it's mainly evil Jimmy doing pranks. Granted, the trouble with clones did a lot more when it comes to evil Jimmy's motivations, but Considering that none of the characters ever question on Evil Jimmy whatsoever, and this is literally the only time we're ever going to see all the characters see Evil Jimmy, well, Jimmy didn't manage to stop since that he got away, is only making me convinced that Libby is capable of handling anger emotions a lot more than anyone in the ending of Santa the Clones, minus Jimmy and Goddard. And like I said before, the... Spongebob inspiration that Jimmy has been taking is so overrated. Now, before any of you ask, yes, I am fully aware that Evil Jimmy made a duplicate Earth, which is Evil Earth with a lot of evil clones, which resulted the original Earth being disappeared or being wiped out since that Jimmy's invention of having the duplicator isn't fully finished. 
is really high stakes. Like I will admit that it's pretty much the highest thing, the highest stake that Jimmy needs to accomplish in order to stop his evil clone from disappearing his off. But to tell you the truth, since that he manages to capture evil Jimmy and he's only just doing a demonstration of what his duplicate can do, which was which was ordered evil Jimmy to whip the de evil eyes antidote from the from the de evil eyes machine. He didn't technically made the same mistake from sending the clones while he lets out the clones out in the public because in that episode he made the clones. Well, in this. He just didn't pay attention completely, and he was mainly just focusing on showing Evil Jimmy the duplicator. Granted, it may be a poor pay attention thing that Jimmy has when it comes to him not paying attention to certain things, which is something that he should have learned by now, but to tell you the truth, since that he, since that he didn't took out the duplicator from the open, which is outside of his lab, well, Evil Jimmy manages to take advantage of. This really feels less severe when it comes to how he causes the problem in comparison to sending the clones. To tell you the truth, I don't have much to say about the trouble with clones because even if what Evil Jimmy did was a lot more severe, which is an indication that Jimmy should have made five clones instead of six, since that the sixth clone would have been Evil Jimmy, which I would have understand onto why the ending of Sending the Clones made sense. But the reason onto why I don't take this episode seriously is because it's literally the same formula from Sending the Clones, while Jimmy doesn't have a lot of time for himself, so he has to resort on using a clone to do most of the walk. And considering that every single character is blinded on the fact that Evil Jimmy is on the loose, especially with the different voices, which you can take into account that Evil Jimmy can easily replicate the real Jimmy's voice from sending the clones, is impossible to take any character seriously when they're written this way. Because, believe me when I say this, the fact that Colin Sheen mistaken Jimmy as the same Jimmy without recognizing the voices completely while Jimmy just asks questions on well what was the last time you see me or that type of questions it just feels really really odd like that's a question that is so juvenile that I'm pretty sure that Colin Sheen wouldn't ask like I understand that they're dumbed down in the later seasons, well, the IQ is really low, which somewhat makes sense for them to hang out with Jimmy, but still, I'm, I'm not buying that for a second. But, I'm just gonna cut to the chase. I think that one of the reasons on to why these two episodes have similar problems that really make it difficult for me to take themselves seriously, especially after six long Neos, is because the people behind Jimmy Neutron probably want to add more conflict than necessary while also wanting an evil Jimmy to have a major impact on the franchise. The concept of having an evil counterpart is somewhat promising, it's just that the execution of the mod is really difficult for me to take it seriously while understanding the comedy of the mod. because, believe me when I say this, there may be a few jokes in The Trouble with Clones which I actually enjoyed. Mainly when Jimmy manages to save his off. Hugh was flying all over the place since that he lost himself when it comes to his weight and whatnot. And, and he manages to fall on the ground immediately when everything turns back to normal. That's honestly the best joke out of the entire series and pretty much one of my favorite moments from Hugh Neutron. which. Is insane a lot considering that I don't enjoy his character, but I can understand to why people enjoy him, especially his presence in Nick Brawl. But at the end of the day, even if I watch The Trouble of Clones way more than Sending the Clones, whenever I think about this episode, it really feels like that they really wanted more conflict to happen, especially the aftermath of this episode. Which you pretty much knew that if season four was going to happen, if the if DNA Productions didn't go bankrupt, we would have had the premiere episode of Deep Impacts that was going to kickstart season four. This is the script of Deep Impacts, mainly four or five pages, and 
if people are going to say that this doesn't feel like Jimmy Neutron because it's mostly fanfic, fanfic -y, to tell you the truth, it's possibly a false draft. They they probably made different drafts along the way when it comes to multiple Jimmy Neutron episodes. So, looking into this draft, it may be weird. And to tell you the truth, I'm pretty I'm pretty sure that they wanted to do a lot more when it comes to the West of writing Deep Impacts, but whenever I look at the met the synopsis of Deep Impacts, well, Evil Jimmy is going to war with the real Jimmy when it comes to clone versus clone. It's somewhat of an interesting concept, but considering that after many years of thinking about Deep Impacts along with the aftermath of the trouble of clones, especially since that Evil Jimmy doesn't end up coming back from the Dark Matter dimension that he caused. I'm just gonna say this right now. Jimmy succeeded by stopping his evil clone. Even with the cancellation. Because to tell you the truth, even if I'm supposed to understand that Evil Jimmy is supposed to be intelligent just like the real Jimmy, it doesn't change the fact that it makes me question onto how he manages to escape the Dark Matter dimension. Like, I understand this is cartoon logic, but with the trouble of clones reaching its 18th anniversary in January, and the more I think about how he manages to, to escape, it's just going to raise more questions and more confusion. Like, I understand that there are a lot of moments from Jimmy Neutron that doesn't make sense all the time, but to tell you the truth, thinking about the aftermath of Trouble of Clones six years ago, after I was making, after making that Send in the Clones review, I was really overthinking it to the point that the end in the Send in the Clones really felt the reason to why I have a problem with Evil Jimmy. It's just that the more time I had, the more I understand the motivations and the way of how the story is structured a lot more better than my perspective of it six years ago. Whenever I think about Evil Jimmy, then how my perspective of him has changed after six years is because I think that he would have been better executed into the world of Jimmy Neutron if Professor Calamitous created him in order to find a better odds against the real Jimmy. But considering in the following episode, the Great Egg Heist, well, he actually returns. Having him return in two episodes back to back wouldn't work at all. And believe me, for me personally, if I think that one of the reasons on to why Sent to the Clones is the way it is now isn't because of the memes of what and whatnot. It's mainly the fact that they just didn't know how to introduce Jimmy, evil Jimmy, into the world without having something to do with Jimmy's invention in order to have mutant side effects. But to be perfectly real with you, if we look into sending the clones when it comes to the other clones is having different personalities, I feel like it's mostly a missed opportunity to see what Jimmy is like when it comes to him having lack of emotion. Like, if the biggest mindset of this episode is just showcasing the different personalities of Jimmy since that he has none of those emotions, I think it somewhat makes sense. But considering that the execution is way more poor in comparison to what I've witnessed from this show, it really feels like that they need to do what they could in order to make this episode entertaining, but at the same time, it made a lot of sacrifices and a lot of problems that made this episode anything but good. Like, when people look into this episode, they mostly think about the clones and nothing else, which is supposed to be the main focus, but if you look into this episode in a serious manner, even for a kid's show, it really feels like that this episode is two-faced when it comes to taking an episode seriously while taking the things out of context for the sake of making the clones entertaining in order to make this episode good on its own. But with this episode reaching 20 years old in March, I just don't find this episode as memorable in comparison to the other Jimmy Neutron episodes. And my harsher treatment towards this episode 
six years ago was really poorly aged. And this is one of the reasons on to why revisiting this episode is literally my high priorities in the same ways as the iCarly episode I Meet Fred. This episode, along with its sequel, really feels like the, the perfect definition of capitalizing distinct personality clones, which I really missed the point in my old review. Like, I have to admit that the clones themselves aren't as irritating and they're clever, they're just being mis misused in a story where every single character is poorly written which really drags the qualities away, which I can instantly see in full view now than, than I did six years ago. I can totally understand that Deep Impacts is supposed to make these episodes a trilogy, to the point that Evil Jimmy is supposed to be the main focus of these three episodes, which does make sense all means considered, but whenever I think about Evil Jimmy and the Trouble of Clones, he's better than he was in Sending the Clones, but at the same time, the more I think about it and the more of how the execution in that in this episode just feels a lot more off-putting of how everything else around Evil Jimmy is literally the problem that drags the qualities from Evil Jimmy down, just made me convinced that him being stuck into the dark matter dimension is basically the end of the end of his character, which makes sending the clones and the trouble of and the trouble with clones a duology rather than making it a trilogy. If deep in, if deep impacts became an episode, and taking the fact that season three included more characters when it comes to the antagonists, it really feels like that the conflict isn't overload involving Jimmy Neutron. Granted, it will have set things straight when it comes to the fourth season by wrapping everything up, but whenever I think about the cloning episodes, it really feels like that they really wanted a lot more conflict than necessary when it comes to the concept of having an evil Jimmy. Maybe it's the fact that I'm just not into evil counterparts of good characters, mainly the definition of being the opposite of bad, but I have to admit that this concept is done much more better than how Johnny Test handled its concept of Evil Johnny, Evil Johnny, and Good Johnny. Because to tell you the truth, I will probably pick Good and Evil Jimmy over Good and Bad Johnny for any day of the week. Well, this video was much more longer than my last revisit, but to tell you the truth, I really want to talk about this just as much as I meet Fred, and considering that these two episodes were literally the only ones I wanted to revisit the most, it's only going to take a matter of time for me to get into my next revisit of my old reviews from the past. But there was still a reason on to why this is still Cartoon Crisis 3 material, because I still didn't enjoy this episode even if I, didn't, even if I don't hate it as much as I did six years ago. Me skipping this episode is mainly the fact that I still didn't like the ending, and the fact that everything else, well, the qualities are mostly overshadowed by factors that really drags the qualities down. Like, I understand you may enjoy the clones, and I can understand why, but to tell you the truth, it's literally impossible to take the clonings of Jimmy seriously, considering that these two episodes from Sending the Clones and the Trouble of Clones really felt a lot more meaningless in comparison to other Jimmy Neutron episodes, including from Season 1. Though I can't deny that the good aspects in these two episodes made me appreciate them a lot more, since that my negativity six years ago is mainly all gone. Well, not completely gone, but you never know. And it's worth noting that this is the final time where Jimmy uses Garlot for options, since that he's been using it since the movie and bits and pieces of it in season one. And this is also the only time he ever uses Garlot for options in season two. This is somewhat similar to Jimmy not using Brain Brasses anymore in Season 3, but to tell you the truth, it really feels like that they only did this for the sake of Jimmy just rushing himself to go to outer space, rather than thinking of different alternatives. But it's still something worth noting 
if people did not understand the last time while well, Jimmy uses Gollard for options. I would go on about how Jimmy has discussed everyone in the past four hours that I'm pretty sure is an indication that he didn't lie even if some people may indicate that he did lie in order to get out of trouble or mainly a way of just delaying the inevitable, but to tell you the truth, it really feels like that he was telling the truth and he wasn't lying, so let's just get into my conclusion of this episode. I'm giving this episode a 3.75 out of 10, which is a big old weighting in comparison to the 2.5 out of 10 that I gave it 6 years ago. Like, if you ignore the criticisms that I gave that really bothered you, considering of how long this video was, then you may be able to enjoy this episode if you're new to the franchise of Jimmy Neutron. So, I'm not going to stop you on that. I was just planning on revisiting this episode in the future, in the future is now. I'm also giving The Trouble with Clones a 5.5 out of 10, which is slightly better over Send in the Clones. I still don't have anything more to say about the episode, especially since that Deep Impacts never happened due to the cancellation of this show. This episode feels a lot more awkward to think about. 